sports court that was being held and, and, and you know, the, the spouses or about soon to be ex-spouses are sitting out there and the judge says, Mr. Gariardi, I've reviewed this case very carefully and I've decided to give your wife $800 a week. And Mr. Gariardi said, that's very fair, Your Honor. And every now and then I'll, I'll send her a few bucks myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, somehow we get this divorce thing a little misconstrued, right? I mean, it kind of gets, takes on a life of its own and all that stuff. Um, Jesus, you know, in the law of Moses, it, it, it says that a, a man can divorce his wife just by giving her a, a written, you know, letter of divorce or whatever. That's in the old days, right? Uh, remember, women were were kind of, you know, a little, little lower on the totem pole, I guess you'd say, than the guys. The guys had all the power, right? So... Uh, yeah, they could divorce, and, and it, had, it had become misused and abused and mistreated to the point where men were just saying, I'm tired of you. I'm going to divorce you. Get gone. You know, and, and the women, you have to remember, they had no place to go. They were dependent upon the men in their lives to take care of them. That was the way it was in the old days in that part of the world. So they either had to go back to their daddy's house if they had taken take her in, or try to marry somebody else just to be taken care of, right? So this is how, and it had gotten perverted, right? And so, so this is not the spirit of the law. It was given in case of adultery. You know, if, if somebody committed adultery, God is saying, you know what? Marriage is supposed to be, it's intended in its perfection to be between a man and a woman and they cleave to each other and they become one flesh, right? They become one flesh. Well, to bring a third or fourth or fifth person into that perverts it and, and destroys the sacred uh, blessing that marriage is supposed to be. So God is saying, you know what? I don't like it. But it, I can see where it's justifiable in case of adultery. And, you know, it, it, so, so there you go. So that's kind of what I think uh, Jesus is saying is, you know, yeah, you people are, have, have perverted everything. You've perverted the law. And, and just because it's okay to divorce somebody with a, a written letter of divorcement doesn't mean it's okay. You shouldn't do that. Um, now, you know, we get into that whole thing, too, about, you know, sin and, and, and forgiveness, right? Okay, so this is kind of a little deep. I know it's deep, deep for 9.30 on Sunday morning. But, uh, you know, you've heard it said, probably, from some preachers and stuff, that uh, once you go, uh, you, you are, you are uh, saved, that your sins are forgiven, past, present, and future, right? Some of, I've heard, heard that said before. Uh, well, I don't know about that. I think your past sins are, but anything you commit from that point forward, you're going to have to confess and get under the blood of Jesus. You know, you got to, you got to live. Otherwise, you could just walk out the door and go live any way you wanted to, and, you know, you're already forgiven. You can go, you know, murder people or, or, or have adultery with whoever and never never confess it, never repent of it, and just go on. I don't think that's what Jesus meant. No, because he, 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 keeps, he keeps hitting us with this kind of stuff, telling us how we're supposed to live. So, I mean, I think there's an expectation that... You know, we've got to try to to hit the bar. We've got to try and, 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 and make the hurdle. So, yeah, true repentance is required to continue in the faith. Now, you know, and, and you can get into all kind of ramifications on all that. 
But, you know, 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Uh, so, what I'm trying to get at, can you be forgiven for a divorce if it's in the past? I don't see why not. We're for, if we can be forgiven for murder or adultery or lying or whatever, why not? So I would suggest, yeah, if we if we he kind of leads you to believe here. He, 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 it, it doesn't really just come out and say it, but he suggests that really if, you, if you're divorced because of adultery, there's no sin. That's what I get out of that. I don't know. Uh, but it, it, even if, if you've been divorced, now, now people get real beat down about divorce. I know, I know, you know, it, it, you can think, Lord, it's the end of the world. I'm never going to find anybody worth a flip. I'm a marred person. You know, I, I, I can't, you know, I, I'm just not going to measure up. I'm going to be a sinner from now on. Confess your your shortcomings, your sin, that, that, that within you that helped bring about the divorce. Because, you know, we're all partially responsible. And get it under the blood and go on. And God will, we'll talk about this in a minute, but God is about trying to put us back together. Okay? He is a God of, of revival and renewal and, and, and raising the dead to new life. So I believe he can probably handle a divorce and, 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 and going forward and a remarriage. Okay? Just saying. Now, that's my personal, you're not going to go everywhere and get that. Okay? Y'all may disagree with that, but that's the way I feel about it. Um, so, that was, that was supposed to be the slide. Okay, four squares. Y'all remember that? Okay. Hold on loosely. Hold on loosely. So, Corey Tinboom says, hold loosely to the things of this life so that if God requires them of you, it will be easy to let them go. Remember, she and her family harbored Jews that were, were trying to escape the Nazis uh, back in the late 30s, and she and her husband, her uh, whole family were taken by the Nazis and to, to uh, uh, I don't know, I, don't, I forget which one of the concentration camps it was, but her sister and her dad, I know, died in that concentration camp, uh, and she was, she lived through it uh, until they, they were liberated. So, so have, well, this is some suggestions. We talk a lot about having self-confidence and we want, you know, want to build up self-esteem and all that kind of stuff. Let me, <coughs> let me throw something else in there. Have God confidence. Have confidence that God is there with you and he can do anything that he wants you to do. And you can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, right? So that's scriptural. So stand on the truth of God's word. Don't let nobody beat you down. God has got your back. He is underneath you. He is all around you. He is over the top of you. He will see it through. Don't let people's words or actions bring you down. You have a God that's on your side who is more powerful than any person in this world or anything this world can throw at you. Um, we, should, we should try to, to find God's plan, whatever that is for us. You know, I, I know when I was early on, um, I felt like I needed to go into forestry for some crazy reason. It was in my heart. And I kept listening to other people say, oh, you don't need to go in there. You're not going to make any money. You know, you have to work like a dog, which was true. <laughs> but, and they were true about, they were right about both of them. But, uh, so I tried, you know, different majors, and my heart just wasn't in it. You know, I, I just 
I flunked out of school, listening to other people and trying their path, you know, trying something that was not meant for me. And I, and I, I fell off in the ditch. I don't know. But, I, you know, the good Lord, I feel like had a plan. And once I finally said, you know, I don't care what everybody else thinks. This is what's in my heart. And this is what I'm going to do things started to kind of come together, you know, and, and, and it began to work out. And, 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 and I, you know, hey, it, that's all I can say. And I didn't know God was going to bring me to Texas and call me into the ministry. I didn't see all that when I was 21 years old. You know, I had no clue. But I believe God used all of that to get me to where he wanted me to be to put me in churches where I needed to be as a lay person so that I could grow in my knowledge and understanding of God, right? And, 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 and have him minister to me and grow me up, uh, you know. Uh, and I will share with you that I had a, when, I, when he was calling me to the ministry, y'all, I was in Livingston, First United Methodist Church of Livingston. You know that church. You know what's going on down there. That church is on fire. It's got, I don't know, it's the, <coughs> behind Lufkin, it's the second largest United Methodist Church in this district, which goes from below Livingston to, you know, way up, I don't know. Uh, it's, a, it's a big church in a small town. It's on fire. They're doing all kinds of crazy stuff down there. They do church like I have never seen church. It's 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 amazing, and I was like, I don't want to leave my church. You know, I don't want to go. And God kept kicking me, <laughs> go! I'm sending you out. I'm like, okay, I'll go, I'll go. And I'm thankful I did, right? Because I wouldn't have known y'all, right? And and, and yay, hallelujah. But, you know, sometimes God asks us to do the hard stuff. It's not always easy. But, you know, hang on because God is able and there's a blessing out there if you just, just keep going. Don't get discouraged. Don't, you know, yeah, it's okay to have a pity party every now and then. I had some. I argued with God about it. And, and you know, you know who won that argument, right? <laughs> so I'm here. So uh, anyway, God's divine plan is what we should all be aiming for in our personal lives, in the life of our church. Okay. Yeah, some things like Alpha. I'm going to say, yeah, I'm sure we'd all, you know, Monday nights rather be somewhere else. You know? Maybe. Maybe not. But it's a, it's a great thing. And God is moving in our, in, to help build us up, if nothing else, right? So anyway, just saying, so, so we're told in Scripture that we should have the same mind that Christ Jesus had, who, even though he was fully God, found himself in human flesh, and he humbled himself unto death, even death on a cross, <coughs> right? So, so we, should, we should also humble ourselves we're not in control. God is in control. Things happen. Good things and not so good things happen to each and every one of us, right? So don't let it beat you down. Hold on to the Lord. Trust in Him. Hang on to Him doggedly, and He will lift you up. Don't let the world get you down. Uh, we're here in this world to serve Christ and to be His ambassadors right? Uh, if we're able to achieve anything in this world, it's for God's glory. If we're able to make money in this world, it's to support Christ, the cause of Christ, right? It ain't for us to, to, you know, to go get, you know, whatever. Yeah, we might be able to enjoy some, some things, fruits of our labor too, but we need to share that. We need to cut, you know, a that portion out for God and say, this is for God and I ain't touching that. And it's going to, to 
for his purpose, right? Because, well, if, if we're to become anything, we should use our influence for the cause of Christ. Now, you know, I know we all see athletes that, that want to praise God for their success and all that kind of stuff. Is that wrong? If we're supposed to do everything for God's glory, I don't know. I think it's cool when you see that. Now, you know, you don't see too many, you know, losing the losers. They stick the microphone in the losers face and say, and, that, and they give the glory to God. <laughs> you don't see that too. It's usually the winners, right? But, but in losing also, we should all give the glory to God because, God, you know, we're not always up on that mountaintop all the time. We're not always the winner. We're not always the ones who, you know, are victorious. We need to be praising God when we're getting our, our behinds beat, too. And when we're beat down and when we're struggling and when we don't know the way up and when we can't find God's plan, we still need to say, but God is with me and God is good and I'm hanging on to God until I find the way. I'm going to hold on because he is good, right? Uh, Paul says in, in Colossians 3, 17, and whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. All right, all right. So love conquers hate, yeah. We talked about Botham Jean's brother, Brant, already. That was my... <laughs> Sharon stole my thunder on that one. Uh, this is hard. Jesus is giving us some hard stuff here, y'all. This is not easy. It's not stuff we just like to do or that we naturally are going to do. It's, it's hard. And it requires us depending on God. If it were not so, it would be a lot easier. But it keeps us honest. It keeps us at the foot of the cross. It keeps us humble like Philippians 2, having the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Right? We have to, we have to stay at the foot of the cross and draw strength from the Spirit of God in us, right? I mean, that's what it's about. We can give in to this old flesh, and we all do in one way or another, all the time. I mean, yeah, we all do. But Jesus is trying to say, you know what? Things are gonna happen to you in this old world but one day, you yeah, know, one day soon, this, this whole world's going to be gone. And you're going to be with God forever. So, yeah, so what's a little discomfort in this world, really? I think, you know, We're to do our best with God's help to love everybody regardless. Love the ones who do you wrong. Forgive them with God's help. They're God's creation too. Uh, the slap to the right cheek is not, you know, I hope God will let me kind of uh, paraphrase this or whatever for him. Uh, think about it though. A slap to the right cheek. Most people are right-handed, right? Mm -hmm. So if they're facing you, it would be a backhand, right? It would be a backhand. What is a backhand? It's an insult. Somebody is insulting you. They're not beating you down. It's, a, it's an insult. So if somebody insults you, let them insult you again. Don't, don't come back while you said that. I'm going to, yeah, let me tell you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't give them what for. Just, you know, let it roll off your back. So what? 
Who cares? What is the most important thing anyway? Is it us getting even with somebody because they insult us? Or should we be ultimately concerned about that person's soul and their relationship with God too? Oh, wait a minute. You're putting that on me, preacher? What? I think Jesus is putting that on all of us. We need to pray for, for, pray for our enemies is what he's saying. He said, pray for those that persecute you, right? Because ultimately, their salvation, their, their, their relationship with God is the most important thing. It's way more important than what they may have said to you. Now, I, I also say, I don't think Jesus is saying here to let somebody assault you, let somebody beat you down, let somebody abuse you. That is not what he's saying. It's okay to defend yourself if somebody is, is going to try and do that kind of thing to you. It's okay for you to get out of an abusive relationship, right? If somebody is beating you down regularly, get out of there. Don't stay, right? I mean, I, that's not what Jesus is saying at all. If somebody's insulting you, that's one thing. But not a beat down. All right. So just, just to clarify. Uh, it, neither does it say we have to condone all behaviors. Sin is still sin, y'all. And, and we can't say it's okay with God. We're not given that license to do that. Only God has that capability. We can still love them. We can still pray for them. We can still try to be a, an influence for God in their life, right? Okay? Uh, so we love them. Doesn't mean we have to condone everything people do, right? Uh, you know, the, the Brant Jean that, uh, that went and hugged uh, the, the Geiger girl, Amber Geiger, I don't think he was condoning what she did to her brother at all. Right? You see what I'm getting at, right? We're not saying what you did is okay. Right? But we still try to get beyond it, get past it. Because everything in this world is passing away. Okay. All right, so let me let me let me kind of try and wrap this up. Jesus goes on to say, just a couple of verses after all this, um, he says this, if you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anybody else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. That's a pretty high bar. I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> but with God's help, we can approach it. You know, we may stumble and fall and, and, and have to repent and confess and, and get it under the blood and go on, right? And, and try to do better, right? So... But here's the good news. I don't know. Some of y'all may know Charles Stanheim, uh, Reverend Charles Stanheim, 91 years old. Uh, he, he was at the garrison, well, living at Mount Enterprise and going to the garrison church until he moved to Lufkin to Pinecrest here about, I don't know, two months ago. Uh, I, just, I just called him Friday. Uh, Kim and I had to go to Fort Worth. We were on the way to Fort I called Charles. I hadn't talked to him since he left. And 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 he, he said, yeah, I had, had my 91st birthday the other day. I'm like, well, good for you. Uh, and he said, guess what I'm doing tonight? What is that? He said, I'm conducting a wedding service. I was like, really? Who for? 
His son Griff had lost his wife to breast cancer about three or four years ago. He's 62. And Charles conducted the wedding service for Griff and his new wife Friday night. That's the God I know. He, he's about, yeah, things happen to all of us. We have stuff. But God's about putting lives back together. He's about bringing healing and wholeness and blessing and helping us get our feet back on the path and trying to follow him. Come what may. God is good. God is All good. The time. Amen. All right, we're going to stand and sing our closing hymn. I think it's just as I am. Oh, like I said. Oh, my God.